All right, everybody. How is everybody doing this evening, man? I am so glad that you guys decided to hang out because we got some news tonight. This is kind of crazy, and I know some people are fed up with the whole Danny Masterson thing. Some people really want to know what's going on, and I'm only doing this because we have news, y'all. Shit's cracking out there. So we're going to get into this in just one second. First, I want to throw a shout out to our mods. Our mods keep this a nice, safe place for us. Without a bunch of lunatics spamming the chat, man. We all know who the mods are. We got Abby. We got Mrs. Blaze. We got Trev. I don't know if any of the other mods are going to come and hang out with us tonight, but hopefully they'll get a chance to do that. I want to introduce you guys all to my dog. This is Zero, the Boston terrorist. Uh, he's a little bit crazy, but, you know, we love him to death. He's a good boy. Are you a good boy? Not right now. You're not. Get down. <laughs> Anyway, y'all, it's so good to see you. Happy Friday. We made it through this week. We got some weekend ahead of us. I got big plans. I get to go to Portland and go see a concert this weekend. And that's why I'm doing a Friday night instead of a Sunday night live. So I hope that you guys are all here and that you guys see that we're not doing Sunday night live. I apologize. It's been kind of a staple. We kind of stay doing the Sunday night live thing, but this week it's just not going to happen. I've had these tickets for a while and I'm really excited. So anyway, uh, we're going to get into this now that we've got a few people in here. I see a couple heads. It's good to see all of y'all, man. Welcome. This community means a lot to me, and I really genuinely appreciate each and every one of you guys, man. You guys are my people. You guys are my foundation. So, look, we're talking about Danny Masterson. We're going to have to kick it back a little bit and do a recap for those who weren't here before. Danny Masterson was sliding into this, this bar that's owned by the Church of Scientology. He was slipping stuff into girls' drinks, and then he was doing things that you don't do to girls while they're passed out and incapacitated. Uh, so he ended up like getting hemmed up for that. Like 20 years later, the church told these women that they were not allowed to come forward. The Church of Scientology is a very powerful, very controlling cult, and they have certain ways that you have to do things. Otherwise, they label you as a suppressive person, and they kick you out. They exile you, and you're not allowed to talk to any of the church members, even if they're your family. If it's your family, if it's your parents, your brothers, your sisters, they get whole families wrapped up into this thing. So a lot of people are like, why did this come out 20 years later? Because the people came forward, the victims, over a dozen victims came forward and the church, they silenced them. They told them they couldn't come forward to the police. They told them they would handle it internally and they didn't. They just allowed Masterson to continue these terrible behaviors, victimizing women. So 20 years later, when these women finally got away from that church, they decided that they were going to come forward and that they were going to do something about this. Mad Catter, I love you so much. Thank you so much, family. Appreciate you. Big love. So 20 years later, Three women came forward to actually press charges. Two of them landed convictions. One did not. But he got 30 years for those two hard R's. He got like hard R in the first degree. Two of them, they gave him 30 years in prison in the California prison system. The California prison system is a bad prison system. It's not really where you want to go. I love you, Mad Jack. Appreciate you. Uh, especially if you have bad charges, you're going to have a bad run in the California prison system. So he ended up going first to Kern Correctional, and that's just an intake, right? That's just a reception center. When you first go to prison, they're going to put you somewhere first. That's just a place where they analyze you. They do a bunch of paperwork on you and try to figure out where they're going to put you. They classify you with your, your uh, security status. And from there, they sent his ass straight to Corcoran. And Corcoran might be a special or a sensitive needs yard, but Corcoran is no joke. People die in Corcoran all the time. Last year, a dude got beheaded there, uh, and it took the COs hours to find the body and the head after this dude was already departed, bro. So it's also the place where, where Charles Manson was at. And there's gangs. So how it works with gangs in the California prison system is there's some major gangs that are out on the yards in the general population yards. And we know what those gangs are. A lot of us do. Um, you know, we're talking about Aryan Brotherhood, Nazi lowriders, uh, dirty white boys for the white gangs. We're talking about Nor Norteños, Sorenos. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of different gangs out there on those yards. And when they, those gang members either drop out like, they mess up, and they know that there's going to be a violation. Violations can be very brutal. The, a lot of these are no-hands-on yards. A no-hands-on yard is where if you're in prison at one of these prisons and they have a no-hands policy, that means 
You got to stab somebody. If somebody messes up, it's not just going to be a beating. You have to go in and stick them. It's that type of serious level of prisons. So if, if a gang member knows he's going to be held in violation, a lot of the time he'll go and tell the guard, hey, yo, yo, keys, man. I need out of here, bro. I need out of here. I'm going to die, homie. You got to get me up off this yard, right? So uh, that's, that's how a lot of these dudes end up there. Some of these dudes... Uh, you know, leave prison and they come back on bad charges, whatever the case may be, these gang members, when they turn dropout and they hit that sensitive needs yard, they form new gangs. So there's several of these gangs that come into play with the Danny Masterson situation because multiple gangs put out green light hits on him. A hit is where you're like marked. Somebody's going to get you. It can generally be an on-site thing, or they can have a certain designated hitter on it. It just depends on the gang, their politics, and the situation. So a couple different gangs had these green lights on him. Uh, the Gay Boy Gangsters, the GBG, was the first one to, to actually put out in the hat that they were going for him, right? And as soon as the other gang saw, oh, the GBG is going for him, we can't let them show us up. We got to do it too. So the Green Lighters put out a hit on him. Uh, the Deuce Fivers put out a hit on him. And then a gang that I'm just now learning about, the BBC, uh, they put a hit out on him too. They put a, uh, an on-site on him. So the BBC is the group that actually got him. And that doesn't stand for what you think it might stand for. We're not talking about big black nothing. These dudes are generally Aryan Brotherhood dropouts. I'm sure that they're dropouts from some Nazi lowriders. I'm sure that there's some dropouts from some of these other gangs, um, like, uh, you know, like the, the Dirty White Boys. But for the most part, I think the majority of their ranks are Aryan Brotherhood dropouts. And I think all of us have heard about the Aryan Brotherhood at this point. They're such a violent and, uh, you know, brutal gang. They're a brutal force in the California prison system. They, they've expanded out to the feds. They've hit some of the other prison systems throughout the country. Um, you know, they've really made a name for themselves as one of the more violent prison gangs that you can be in, especially if you're a white boy. Um, so... The BBC chose the most unfortunate name for themselves they possibly could. The Brothers by Choice. Because I know what I think of when I hear their initials. And they go by their initials in there. So there's a lot of these white supremacist dudes in there with BBC tattooed on them. Either their chest or their neck. Wherever they get it. That's crazy as hell to me. I still can't wrap my mind around all that. But uh, they were the first ones to see him. And they got him. So here's what was happening. Danny had said that he was going to delete himself. He was going to self-delete. He was going to cancel his own subscription to breathing, right? And so he told the COs that, and they took him and they put him in a crisis bed for 10 days. When he got to Corcoran, they were already on lockdown. They were already locked down in that institution. So it wasn't like anybody could get to him at that point in time anyway. So before they got off lockdown, he said, I can't do this. I'm going to end myself. And they took his ass. They dragged his whiny little ass and they put him in a, a crisis bed. Now that bought him 10 days. As soon as he got out, they were off lockdown. They put him in a single cell all by him onesie out there. You know what I'm saying? And so he was refusing to go to chow because he knew that there were hits on him. Word spreads fast in prison, y'all. You're going to find out if somebody's got a hit on you some of the time. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a really high profile thing like that. People are going to find out that there's a hit on a dude. So he must have caught wind. Probably one of the COs told him, hey, <laughs> they're, they're going to get you, fool. Uh, and the COs, like, just so you know, like, for those of you who haven't been to prison, correctional officers, when there's something like a hit on a dude who victimized women or children, they're not going to go out of their way to help you. They're not going to go out of their way to protect you. They don't want to write up the paperwork on it, but they're not going to go out of their way, and they will 1,000% make fun of you. They will clown you. They will make you more afraid. They will pry on your insecurities. They'll be like, yeah, they're going to get deep in your guts, Danny. Uh, and that was something that was on the table. So he refused to go out to chow. He was locked down in his single cell. And when they would go to pop the chow door, he would slide it back shut and be like, no. So three days in of not eating chow, like if you don't go to chow for three days, they have to, they, they pay attention to that type of stuff. And after three days, they have to take you to medical or mental health, one or the other, to have an evaluation. So they were taking him to this evaluation, and that's when the brothers by choice saw him. Now, three of these dudes, 
At first, I thought it was two. Gunners Collective actually talked to a correctional officer who was there, and he said it was three of these dudes jumped him, and there was two COs, and the COs kind of just stepped aside a little bit, got on the radio till more COs came so that they could all handle it. He got roughed up a bit. That, that was his little welcome to prison. You've got 30 more years of this stuff. Uh, so, you know, that's exactly what he has to look forward to, and now he knows. Um, and so they got at his ass. And they immediately took him, put him back in his single cell, locked him up for about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. They took the others, the BBC, and they put them in ADSEG. They put them in the hole. They tossed them in solitary confinement. So they go to solitary and old boy goes right back to his cell. Now, while he's in his cell, they're getting stuff ready. Now, it, it, usually if you're going to get in, if you get in a fight and they're going to move you out of an institution... That usually has a process, and it can usually take up to two weeks. Usually it takes up to two weeks. So they'll put you in the hole, even if you didn't do anything wrong, just for your own protection. They toss your ass in the hole, and they leave you there until they can get you out of there. Um, so they didn't do that with this dude at all whatsoever. He was in there for like an hour and 45 minutes, and they took him and transported him straight out of the institution. Hold on real quick. Uh, our friend Blue, the outlaw feminist, said, Predators are not men. Men protect women from predators. Be safe and be dangerous in Portland. Love you, sis. Appreciate you. Um, Alish Wilhelm said, New favorite channel. Thank you for the awesome videos. I'm so glad that you're here, sister. Welcome to our community. We, we absolutely appreciate you being here with us. Uh, F it all. I hope everyone enjoys his siesta. I hope he enjoys his siesta. Too damn bad the Church of Scientology keeps everything quiet. So look, that's really quintessential to what we're about to talk to, F and all. I'm glad that you brought that up. We're working our way there right now, homeboy. Big love and respect to you. So they broke procedure. I think it's important to note that this is the first time that they broke procedure. And, and they, they took him immediately. But the joint they took him to is the California men's colony. Now, to get into the California men's colony traditionally, procedurally, and they don't be breaking procedures a whole lot, but procedurally, you have to, uh, you have to have been uh, with clear conduct for two straight years. You have to have two years of clear conduct to be able to get to the California men's colony. That's the second way that they broke procedure. First was that they transported him on emergency status, immediate. Second was that they took him to a place that you don't just get to go to. You have to have two years without getting a write-up, a DR, going to the hole, getting caught with contraband, getting caught nibbling on somebody's pipe, none of that stuff. You have to have two years straight without getting any type of controversy and getting a write-up from a CEO. He had been in for like less than a month, and they shipped him to this joint. So that's strike two. That's the second time they broke procedure for this limp dick piece of crap, bro. Um, now we know where he's at in the prison. Thanks to Gunner Collective for this info. He he shot the info and then we had a confirmation on it. Um, so they put him in, and this is the third strike. This is the third strike. They don't break procedure like this for anybody. This is just not something that they do. They put him in a 65 and over unit that's like 65 and over. It's senior citizens to hospice. So he's like literally on there with people that are dying. There's nobody under the age of 65 on this unit except for Danny Masterson. So why is he getting this special treatment, y'all? Why do you think that Danny Masterson is getting this special treatment? Because they don't care if you're famous in there. That's not something that they're worried about. They don't, they're, they're not in there going, oh, it's Hyde. We're so excited we got Hyde in our prison. They don't give a crap about you, bro. You are a bag of skin full of blood and bones that has a DOC number. That's all that you are when you're in prison. That's your life. That's your identity is that DOC number. So he's in there and they are broken three separate rules, three separate policies for this dude. They put him in there with dudes that are literally dying. So here's, there's a couple things that come to mind with this. Uh, for me, at least Wesker can't do the time. Don't do the crime. Look, this dude ain't really doing the time homeboy. And that's kind of what's got me out here reporting on this right now is they're making special concessions for this dude. And I don't think it's because of who he is. I think it's because of who he knows and he's been. So let's just give, let's backtrack one second because 
he, he got ousted from the Church of Scientology. His wife left him. His wife left the Church of Scientology. I don't think that he has pull. They've labeled him a suppressive person. I don't think that he has pull with the Church of Scientology anymore as a member because he's not a member anymore. But what he might have is information on them. He might have information on them that would incriminate them, including in his own crimes, because they knew these things were happening. So they might be pulling some strings, and believe me, believe me when I say this, the Church of Scientology does have the type of power, money, and sway to be able to pull these strings for him. That's 100% something that they could do. This has their slime all across it. This whole move, the way that he got moved and they broke three procedures, this is something the Church of Scientology could have dipped their little toddler tongs all up in and, uh, you know, ran their man pleasers, thrown a little cash around and made this happen for Danny. That's what I think happened. So um, he's in there and like, so his life now is literally being in a senior citizen home inside prison, like a senior citizen home slash hospice unit in the California men's colony. I don't know if they put him there just on emergency status until they have a bed opened up in another unit because it's quite possible that they might have just slid him in there until another bed opens up. That is a thing that they will do sometimes. They'll just emergency house you somewhere if you're being transported, but he shouldn't have been transported that quick. He never should have gone to that prison and putting them in a senior citizens uh, unit, I've never seen that. I've never seen somebody who's, uh, you know, 20 years too young, go into a senior citizen's unit, bro. Like, he's in the elderly unit, bro. He's straight up in the home. It smells like boiled goose and cabbage up in that bitch. I promise you. You got, dude, he's probably the only dude in there not pushing diapers, dog. Uh, and, and it's weird. It's weird that they've got him there. It doesn't make sense. Um, I don't know if they're going to keep him there. And, would you be able to live in that type of an environment for 30 years? I mean, you might be safe-ish. It's safer for sure. But, bro, mentally, how is that going to work? You're in there with a bunch of dudes that are much older than you. There's diapers. There's, it smells like piss. It smells like shit. Dudes are dying every single week. Dudes are on ventilators and all sorts of weird shit like that, bro. How long do you think he's going to be able to last mentally doing 30 years in that type of an environment? He's not going to make it in there. He's 100% not going to make it in there. And that's if they even intend on keeping him in this specific unit. They might have just put him there because it was the only bed that they had open. Somebody died, slide Danny in that bed. He could be rocking right out with somebody's, uh, you know, used bed bugs that just uh, met the Reaper 20 minutes before he got moved. That's 100% something that could have gone down, and they might be waiting till the bed opens up on another unit. Now, if he gets slid out to another unit at the CMC, he's going to have problems. He's not going to be safe anywhere. I know a lot of people that haven't been to prison don't understand this, but there are no safe spaces inside of a prison. There's not a safe space out here. People have that illusion of safety, but it's 100,000 times more in prison because there's not really anywhere you can hide when you're in a prison from everybody. You're never going to be completely isolated and alone. Even if you're in solitary, you're still going to be surrounded by other people uh, and have other people bringing you your food and your laundry and all that shit like that, bro. Like that he's not going to be safe where he's at right now is probably the safest spot they could possibly put him, but I don't know how long he'd make it. And I don't know how long he would intend to stay. Ohio trucker one said, should have put Danny in GP on a gang unit and kick back and watch the fireworks. Personally, I agree. I think the only reason that they didn't do that uh, is because Scientology got their filthy little dick beaters and stirred around and pulled some strings and got them out of there. Uh, White Snow. Hey, JD. Hope you're doing good. My proficiency was judgment. Uh, was going to be placed at 222.24. Please trust judgment is being passed. Big love and respect to you, homie. Thoughts with you, man. Uh, so... Yeah, I don't really know, other than Scientology, what could have gotten him this type of break. Because this is a huge break. It's crazy that he would be, you know, moved immediately, moved to that prison, and put on an elderly unit. I've never seen anything like that before. It's just nuts. So, we now have connections within the CMC. 
um, my buddy Andy. I'd like it if you guys are on TikTok, if you guys are on, um, if you guys are on Insta, you should follow Andy. He's going to have these updates before I have them. He's been a helpful source of information to me. He's one of my really good friends. Uh, so Andy Goltz, he goes by, uh, he goes by first day out 916 on TikTok and he goes by fresh out 916 Andy over on Insta. You guys should be following Andy if you guys want to keep up on any of this stuff. Andy is that dude. Andy has some, some people inside the CMC right now. We're getting information from in there now. Uh, we've also got information lined up from other places around the state of California. Uh, so it's really cool that we've been able to work together and we've been able to network on this whole California prison system thing. Uh, and Andy has been instrumental and quintessential in me being able to get intel in there. Steve Jackson said, you might be overthinking it. It might be as simple as a warden or the DOC covering their ass. The eyes of the press and social media are on this 100%. Here's the thing, dude, is like, they don't really have that much of a liability with him. He's uh, he's straight up a convicted hard artist, dog. Uh, and prison is an enter at your own risk type of place. It, it doesn't really matter. All they have to do is say, we put him on a sensitive needs yard. He should have been fine. That's literally all they have to do. Literally, they're covered once they put you in a sensitive needs yard instead of GP. Uh, Blue Bomber. My guess is the church put him in there so he won't spill the church's secrets. And then he will have an accident so no loose ends for the church. Look, that is a really powerful prediction. And I'm 100% with you on that. My, I 100% believe that the church is why he is where he is right now. I don't think for a second that it just has to do with him, uh, you know, being some sort of liability and they're worried about like, you know, what happens if somebody slides something in his butt cheeks or his neck hole. You know, I don't think that that's what it is. They don't do that for people. They, they just don't do that for people. A little bit of press on him isn't really going to get him this type of leeway. You're not going to break every rule in the book just because, you know, somebody been on a, a, a sitcom. Uh, so um, I think it was the church, 100%. Heather Kirk said, big love and respect, JD, finally caught alive. Love you, sis. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're here. The lives are my favorite. This is where we're all family and we all get to hang out. White Snow said, uh, sudden death syndrome. <laughs> My dog. Hey, yeah. Sudden death syndrome is probably what's going to take him out. Sudden death syndrome. Uh, he's definitely not going to Epstein himself. But yeah, the Church of Scientology, I would imagine that he has some info on them some intel on them, uh, you know, that he could probably involve them in other crimes as well as his own crime and that they don't want all that coming out. Uh, so they're probably doing a little something for him, you know, uh, but we're going to see, we're going to see how this pans out. We've got some people in there. They're going to feed us some information, some intel as it comes in. Um, you know, we're going to see how this whole thing progresses. Hey, uh, babe, yeah. did I miss a super chat from Tanya? Uh, Bearded Bam Bam, did you see the chomo in Russia who got stuck 38 times in the back, buried shallow, and the police called it self-defense? Yeah, or self-delete. Yeah, man, that's that's how it goes in Russia. Um, if you're if you're a chomo in Russia uh, and you want to delete yourself, you stab yourself in the back 38 times and bury yourself in a shallow grave. That's the Russian way. <laughs> I love that the police just rolled with it and just labeled it a sewer slide, bro. That was so dope of them. Uh, very interested. I'm square, but just wanted to say thank you for your giant heart uh, and give you props for finding a filter that makes it look like you're wearing a shirt. Much love from the Northwoods of Wisconsin. Yo, dog, I love you, homie. Appreciate you. This big heart, you have a place in it, my friend. And Tanya, I'm sorry that I missed it. I hope you're still here, hun. I get backed up when I'm trying to get on the front end of this thing. Tanya said, love to JD, Jack, Zero, and the fam listening as I'm in the grocery store. Lol, one love. Tanya, we love you, sis. We're so glad that you're here. Sorry it took me so long to get to that. I apologize. Fire up the blades. What's the overall weirdest thing you saw in prison? My ex was in prison and she saw an inmate eat a heel of skin. 
oh, of some chick she was in a relationship with. It's not shocking, just bizarre. I find it shocking, bizarre, and disgusting to eat somebody else's heel skin, dog. Uh, what's I, I've seen a lot of weird stuff in there. Uh, I think the doo-doo painters, bro. We had some poo poo Picassos. People would finger paint. They'd dig in their ass uh, or, you know, crap on the floor and finger paint with it. One guy, it really looked like mountains and you could see a sun and there's little trees and all of that, bro. Like, and this dude was in his cell going, here, kitty, 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 kitty. Bro, there's no cat. Shut up. It's four in the morning. He was a jaybird, bro. But I think that he was actually trying to pretend that he was insane to get an insanity plea. And I don't think it worked for him. Jennifer Wong, big love and respect to you. Thank you so much, sister. Um, like a jail bob Let's see. Franzi, would you ever consider drinking ever again? Franzi, I've never once said that I will never do anything again. I wake up every day, understand that I'm an addict, and uh, assess where it takes me if I put certain substances into my body. And I say not today, bitch. I've never said I'm never gonna do nothing again. I don't look at forevers because forevers overwhelm me. I just wake up every day, I love the life that I have and I decide that it's not risking worth risking for anything, man. I wouldn't be hanging out with y'all if I was off on a cold one, man. I guarantee you I wouldn't. I would be out in the trap house, I'd be out in the streets, I'd be out hitting licks I'd be trash and then I'd be back in prison. So I, I don't want to give that up for anything. And drinking is a risk to me because the drinking won't mess me up. What will happen is I'll be drunk and I'll start having ideas uh, that I don't have the, the forewithal to be able to rein in. And then I'll be off to the races and I'll be right back in cuffs. And I hate cuffs, bro. Um... Let's see here. Doc, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, JD. Glad to catch the live finally. Been through the court system and had to rebuild my life as a custom watchmaker over some BS charges. Let's just get the wood chipper out for him. 100% with you, Doc, man. I'm so proud of you for going through the court system, fighting for your freedom, and rebuilding your life. Being a watchmaker sounds incredible, dog. Big love and respect to you, Doc. Hell yeah. Ohio Trucker One said, I got full custody of Lucas and some of my biker buddies are watching him while I'm on the road. They've more or less adopted him as their little prospect and Lucas loves his new uncles. I'll tell you what, man, kids are safe around bikers no matter what, bro. No matter what club it is, no matter who the kid is, bro, kids, all kids are safe around bikers, dog. That's one thing I've always respected so much, heart and soul for them, is the way that they protect kids, dog. Uh, and I'm glad that Lucas has some big ass uncles because you know ain't nobody gonna want to mess with them hanging out with them, dog. Big love to you, bro. Dark Titan, Dark Titan says, what happens to people that go for tax evasion because they don't know how to file it? Dark Titan, you need to call H and R Block. You need to call H and R Block. Don't don't go getting yourself in trouble. I'm just playing with you. Look. Nobody really cares if you steal from the government in there. Uh, most people in there hate the government. The governments are the ones that are the ones that locked them up. So uh, you, you're going to be just fine if you go in for tax evasion. You're going to go to a cushy little place like my friend Ian Bick did. They're going to put you in some like nice little mellow kickback place. Uh, and it's much nicer than the state prisons I went to. You'll go to federal prison, but you'll be at a low. Uh, Mad Catter, thanks for the hope these uh, that these topics start getting more attention. Y'all, appreciate you, Mad Catter. Big love and respect. Um, Jimmy, man, we just got a lot of these. I love y'all. Thank you so much. It means so much to be able to interact with you guys, and the support is really helpful. Jimmy James Wu. Huge fan, JD. Jimmy, I don't have fans, homie. I, I just have friends and family. So whichever you're comfortable with, you're a part of now. You're in this community. You're either my friend or my family. Fans is a one-way street, and I love you guys so much, bro. Like, so, you know, you're stuck with me now. You messed with me, so you stuck with me, homie. Uh, your content is inspiring. Hope Danny gets his cheeks clapped. What do you think will happen to Shonda Van Ar Vander Ark in prison? I can't get over what she did to her disabled son. Thank you, JD. I don't know which story that is, bro. I read so many horrible things about so many horrible people that did terrible stuff. I I'm not really sure which one that is. I wish I could give you a more defined answer, but Jimmy, I love you and I'm glad that you're here, homeboy. Uh, dented drip, JD, I need some advice. I recently found out that an old friend is a chomo and has been in county jail for over a year on a marshal hold. I need to know that he's 
gets what he deserves, but I've heard you say it's different in, and you ran out of space. So I don't know exactly what you're getting at on that. Um, so look, man, uh, he's not your friend anymore. He's a chomo now. Um, and wherever he's at, he's going to get the blues in county jail. He's going to get the blues in state prison. He's going to get the blues in federal prison. There's no good place with those types of charges, man. And I'm proud of you. I'm glad you're here. Thank you, brother. Zach, Zach the Witch Doctor. Hey, JD, sorry I'm late. What did I miss about Danny? Zach, hang out for a few minutes, and I'm going to do another recap of everything that we just talked about. For those of you who, uh, you know, came in a little bit late, I love you, brother. I'm glad you made it. Dented Drip. A county jail versus a prison. This is the this is the continuation, bro. A county jail versus a prison. Uh, how can I make sure he's getting everything he deserves while in jail? Should I write letters to random inmates to make sure of his charges? Uh, look, if you do that, it's going to fall back on you. They monitor every piece of mail that goes in and every piece of mail that goes out. You're going to have to trust the system on this one, homie. They're going to find out what he's there for. I promise you, whether it's through his paperwork or people he's going to court with coming back and letting them know or them looking at his name and calling their people and being like, yo, uh, check out my homie. What's he in for? We have ways to figure that out. I promise you they're already on it, homie. Don't incriminate yourself in any type of way. They've got it. You don't need to do anything, bro. They're going to handle it. Prison justice hits every single time, dog. Um, Night of Mischief, thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Tyson, keep it up, brother. You too, my man. I appreciate you, big dog. Hell yeah, one love. Cat, my brother is a heroin addict and is serving four years in prison. Any advice? He's been in and out of jail and now serving prison. Any advice for us? So, look. It's really important that when he gets out, he has a solid support system and that he has structure and routine. When you're in prison, you get solid structure and routine and you become very accustomed to it. So if you get out and you have that already lined up, that really, really helps you because otherwise you feel like you're floating out into space. Then you start, you know, you're lonely. You don't know what to do with your time. You start hitting up those old friends. And those old friends end up in those old same exact behaviors. And then the next thing you know, you're back in prison or you're OD'd and you're dead. So it's really important to build a solid foundation for him. Help him hit the ground running. Help him with job searches. Help him make sure that he's got something to occupy his days, Cat. That'll be entirely helpful for him. I love you, sister, and I'm pulling for him. And if there's anything that I can do to help him when he gets out, you just let me know, okay? This is what we do. Uh, William Matouche, I don't know if I said that right. I apologize if I butchered your name, dog. Um, all that special treatment probably means he got a secret sugar daddy already. Y'all, uh, <laughs> I guarantee you he's not making it through his prison set without slurping up some scissor, bro. That's just how it's going to be for him. That's going to be his best defense is going to be stretching his neck on somebody. So, um, look, we got through the supers. Thank you, everybody who's been hanging out while we do the supers and while we just talk back and forth and kick it. Um, I'm going to answer a couple just random questions that I see. They, they go pretty fast, so I just have to grab the ones that I can't. Is Lee Edwards in here? Lee, we love you. I just want you to know, family, we love you, Lee. Um, look, uh, so I'm going to look at some of these and just answer a couple of these real quick. Then we're going to do a recap. For anybody who didn't catch the beginning of the live and they want to know what happened, Zesty One, what's up, dog? Night of Mischief, hell yeah. Uh, Amy McKillen, love the reality check you provide for civilians. Thank you so much, sister. Big love and respect to you. Trev, much love and respect to the DeLay family from the Colorado clan. You know we love you. Anybody who came in late, uh, and didn't catch the beginning, we're going to be going over a recap before we're done here. Crystal the Wall, I really like you. That is all. I appreciate you so much, sister. Thank you. Uh, but I'm going to hit a couple of these comments because I love you guys, and I want to be able to like get at some of these comments. Um, let's see. Uh, Elvin Rodriguez, bro, I can't get past seeing someone get stabbed in front of me in there. You know, I saw a lot of people get stabbed when I was in there. I had people get stabbed right in front of me the very first day that I was in prison. I had people get stabbed behind me and got splashed with a bunch of blood. I watched the same dude get stabbed in three different locations in one day. It was my homeboys that did it. They really needed to get him, and they got away with it too. And, and they got him really good. He had glasses on. They stabbed through his glasses. Broken glass went in his eye. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of memories that stick with me. Um, you know, and just even if you don't see anything really insane in there, you don't see somebody get their head split or whatever happens, uh, just constantly being hyper vigilant can leave you with the same type of trauma and PTSD that a lot of people get uh, in combat situations. So I feel you, homie, and we're all in this together. You're not alone here. We love you. Octane and wrenches, sudden death syndrome, much love from Spokane. What's up up there in Spokane, man? We got a beautiful day down here in Eugene, Oregon today. I hope y'all are having the same type of weather. Um, you can't spell happiness without cryptic right. <laughs> Big love and respect. Best channel about prison. Uh, Kringle Jelly. Yo, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm so glad to have you here. Uh, Betty, uh, Bet C is here from Tampa. Um, you said just the tip. Karma, what's up? That's my best impression of that dude. Like, he said it so weird, bro. You said just the tip. I was dying, bro. Everybody was dying. He kept that nickname forever. Um... Military prison or stateside? I did my time in stateside prison. I've never been in the military. I don't know if that was even directed at me. I'm just nosy, and it's in the chat, so I'm going I'm to I'm read your stuff. I'm going to answer. Um, new subscriber, first time catching a live. Love you, JD and Jax. Indy Charmer, thank you so much. Welcome to the community. We're glad to have you here. Lives are my favorite thing, so I'm so glad that you got to jump in and kick it with us tonight. Um, so I think that we're going to do... Oh. Did I get these? I did not. Uh, J9 Larson, much love from Canada. New fam, fam jam here. Yo, J9, welcome. We are so glad to have you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the community. Big love to you and all of our Canada family up there. General Kenobi, uh, yo, JD, what do you do if someone you know tells you uh, not that they want to hurt kids, but they have thoughts that make them afraid of what they will do. It comes from trauma, but never acted on. What would you do? And so they've never acted on it and they're reaching out for help. If somebody has some shit wrong with their brain and their wiring is screwed up and they're trying their hardest not to victimize somebody, that human being deserves help. Uh, and any of their potential victims deserve that human being getting help. But that's somebody, something that's going to be above your pay grade. Honestly, it's above my pay grade. I don't know that it can be fixed. I don't know how to go about any of that. Um, but I, I would definitely recommend to them that they get professional help because professional help is exactly what they need. James O'Keefe, big love, man. Chris Colvard, keep that knowledge flowing. Keep the positive vibes going. Big love and respect to you, brother. Hell yeah. Uh, Lowly Mackin, I appreciate you, sis. Uh, Morgan Hurley. Hey JD, I recently had my ex's uncle text me and come at me for smoking tree. This man is a chomo and I almost had to laugh at him thinking he could tell me anything. I feel you 100% on that. That's crazy. I block his number. I block his number and I, I, I would just block his number. I was about to say some stuff, some illegal shit, bro. I'm always trying not to tell people to do illegal shit. I, I love you so much. Uh, yeah, that's crazy as hell. Uh, Night of Mischief. Uh, Army Lieutenant Colonel Jacob J. Sweatland gets reprimand for camera in dressing room, reached a plea agreement with prosecutors. That stuff happens all the time, man. It's so crazy to me, the plea agreements that dudes will get when they're doing some shysty, weird, chomo, predatory stuff and they swerve prison. They swerve prison. That's crazy to me, man. Steve Mathis. Uh, hey, what's what's with the title? I just joined uh, the live. Did Danny meet Mr. Woodchipper? Danny has not met the Woodchipper yet. Give me one second. I'm going to do a recap here. Uh, I just got to get this last super real quick. Uh, Mark, my name is Taylor, and my dad is a huge fan. He has a severe concussion. He can't remember much. He got excited uh, to see you. Yo, uh, Taylor, I love you. I appreciate you. Mark, I'm sorry that you're going through this right now, man. This whole community and me and my family, we're here and you're a part of our family, bro. We're so glad to have you here. We are sending you all of the healing energy, all the love, man. Big vibes to you, homie. We know that you could do this, bro. You're a soldier. You could get through this. You're going to be all right. We love you, dog. 
Uh, True North Prodigy, thank you so much. Dude, that's big. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. That means more than you know, Big North, True North. Uh, Chico, love from Memphis. Thank you for telling what it really is like out there. Folks need to understand this is no life to live. Four years sober. Yo, four years sober. We're giving a big shout out to Chico, man. Big love and respect, homie. Four years is an absolute miracle, big dog. I'm with you, man. Uh, Amanda Davenport, thank you so much. Uh, Silencio Steve, ever see someone get out after false convictions? Never once. Never once. I've seen all sorts of stuff, bro. I've seen all sorts of stuff, but i never once seen a dude get out from no false convictions. Um, I've seen people get out in county because they beat their case, but once they got to prison, they were convicted, they went through a trial, the 12 jurors said, it's beyond a reasonable doubt that they did this. I never seen nobody make no comeback from that, bro. Uh, never once. Uh, Danielle Bella you. thank you so much. We appreciate you, sister, big love. Dented drip, homie. Thank you so much, dog. That's a big one. I really appreciate that. Love you. Thank you for the advice. I will not incriminate myself. Seriously, they read every piece of mail, homie. So if you're sending in repetitive mail, uh, letting people know what he's in there for or saying anything kind of sketchy, they will come back on you. They can charge you with trying to incite violence in one, short, one way or another. And you're literally giving them written evidence, you know? So it, please, please don't do that. Um, I will not incriminate myself. And I'll just trust the system. First time catching you live. And I wanted to say thanks for everything. Your videos and stories about chomos getting what they deserve have been comforting. Love you, fam. I love you too. And I'm so glad that you're here, Dented Drip. Yo, just trust that process. It's going to happen. It's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of when. They're going to get that dude, man. They're going to get him. So just let it happen, dude. And live your life. You deserve to be happy. Like... I know that uh, for me, being able to tell and share these stories with you guys is healing for me because of what I went through as a child, because of what happened to me when I was six years old, being able to share these stories with you guys, it's cathartic for me. So I'm glad that there's so many people that it resonates with and people that are out there going, what shipper? I love y'all. Sorry, Jax. I know that was loud. So look. We're going to jump back in and we're going to do a recap now. So if you were here from the beginning, you're going to have to hear the same thing or we love you and we'll see you on the next one. But everybody who jumped in in the middle, man, we're going to, this is your time. Uh, we're going to go through this. So Danny Masterson dropping drugs and girls drinks at a Scientology uh, bar and uh, got hit two of them uh, for 30 years. And they sent him to, to Kern Correctional. Then they sent him to Corcoran. When he hit Corcoran, it was already on lockdown. He couldn't get out of his cell. Because when you're on lockdown, ain't nobody going nowhere. Uh, and the GBG, the Gay Boy Gangsters, put out a hit on him. They said, yo, we're going to get this dude. We might stab him. We might beat him up. We might run up inside his cheeks. You will just have to see how we get this dude. But we're going to get this dude. It's happening. And then... A few other gangs that are out there were like, we can't let the gay boy gangsters show us up, bro. We need to all be on green light with this dude. So pretty much everybody in there was in a race to get his ass. He told the CO that he was going to himself, and they put him on a crisis bed for 10 days. Now, when he came off that crisis bed, the institution wasn't on lockdown anymore. So they put him in a single cell and he was refusing to go to chow. After three days of refusing to go to chow, they have to take you to go see medical or they have to take you to mental health, one or the other, to get you an evaluation to see why you're not eating. And if you're like still suicidal or whatever. So they were walking him, two COs, one on each side, CO, Danny, CO, and Three dudes from a gang called the BBC. Brothers by choice. These are white boys. They are gang dropouts, mainly from the Aryan Brotherhood. I'm sure that they also have uh, Nazi lowriders and dirty white boys up in their ranks. But um, mainly they're Aryan Brotherhood. We all know who the Aryan Brotherhood is. Pretty much everybody has heard of the Aryan Brotherhood at this point. Um, and they jumped them three deep. Three of them jumped on them while the cops were there. The cops just kind of called for backup. Because they're not going to jump in and deal with three dudes fighting somebody when there's only two of them. So 
Danny got a taste of it. He got a taste of it, but they immediately put him back in his cell and they took them, them BBCs, them, them, uh, you know, them gang members, and they put them in the hole. That's what they usually do. They'll put you in the hole. They don't normally just take you and put you back in your cell and then ship you out, but that's what they did with Danny. They shipped him to a prison that you only get to go to if you've got two years clear conduct. Did I mention the first time they did this on a weekend? They don't be transporting people on the weekend, homie. This is every single part of this is foul. He didn't go to the hole and wait for two weeks. Usually they take you to the hole if you're going to be transported to another prison for your safety. And you sit in the hole for like two weeks while they figure out where they're going to put you. They immediately put him back in his cell and wrapped him up. In under two hours, he was on his way out of that institution to go to an institution that you only go to with two years clear conduct. And it was on a damn weekend. They had to make a special trip with this dude. And then they put him in a senior citizen hospice like a 65 and older to hospice uh unit there that they have at the california men's or the cal the the california men's colony they put them in this old ass people unit where you know there's people dying all the time there's senior citizens dudes shitting they diapers everywhere uh so it's probably the safest place they possibly could have put him but they broke procedure like at least and, and i counted three times when we talked about this earlier, let's add that fourth one. They transported them on the weekend. They never do that. That's not something that they do. So they broke procedure four times for this dude. I swear to God, it's because of the Church of Scientology. Like, that is every bet that I have is that the Church of Scientology dipped their dirty ass little fingers in there because he probably has info on them. He probably has intel because they were wrapped up in his case. And he probably has things that would incriminate them and make them look terrible. So they're probably keeping him in somewhat of decent shape and, and working with the, the Department of Corrections, paying who they need to pay, you know, pressing up on who they need to press up on to make sure that this dude gets a halfway decent ride because he could work out a deal to flip on the Church of Scientology. Now, they've already exiled him. He already lost his family. His family, his, his wife left the Church of Scientology. His wife's been seen rubbing all up on his brother. Uh, and now he's in this old folks home inside a prison. But I don't think that they're going to keep him there. Like, even if they keep him there, he's not going to be able to ride out in an old folks home where people are dying left and right, like this hospice ass unit for 30 years. It's just not going to happen. I don't see his mental health letting him. It's uh, got to be a horrible environment for him to be in. And they may have just put him there for a period of time so that they could, uh, you know, wait until there was another space opened up because they moved him like immediately. So he probably slid into to a bed that belonged to a dude who died earlier that day. That's my guess. Uh, so that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, we're just waiting to see. Um, my good friend Andy has contacts inside the CMC, the California Men's Colony, where he's at right now. So we will be getting more updates as things happen. I'm not going to talk about this to where it's to death. I'm only going to talk about it when we have new things to talk about. But anytime there's new stuff to talk about with this case, I will come directly to you guys. You will hear updates because we have someone on that yard to be able to give us information. We might have to send him a package. We might have to send him a little money on his books for canteen if he sends good intel. I'm with the business. I'm down to do that because I want to keep y'all informed. Um, okay, so Doc K said a certain church may be helping him, but he can't run forever. Bet. Sis, you're 1,000% right. He will not be able to run forever, and they're probably just biding time right now. Marcel Dufour. Uh, ben had my deep downs in and out of jail very violent, drunk, and not caring. A friend reached out, got me help uh, that was needed from my tours. I'm sober now. Uh, one year, anger and violence under control. Marcel, we are so proud of you. We are so damn proud of you. That is an amazing testimony, homeboy. Big love and respect to you. I'm so glad that you're a part of this community, dude. Um, I drank what? My father was accused of essaying my niece and it destroyed his mind and health. She finally recanted her statement and said that it was a stage four convicted chomo. 
Uh, Pop was never the same even after they cleared him. The Chomo got karma. I'm glad that the Chomo got karma in the end. Look, sometimes allegations and accusations do come out and they're false. And that is awful. That is like one of the worst things that you can do to a human being is to put false allegations of that type of crime on a human, any type of crime. But I'm so sorry for your father. I'm glad that the Chomo caught it in the end. Big love and respect to you, homie. Thank you guys for the supers. Uh, Shada, hey JD, love you and your videos. Have you seen the video about the Russian father who stabbed the Chomo 27 times, who was uh, going after his daughter and police said it was a sewer slide? Yes, yes, dude. They found him. I think it was, I don't even think it was uh, 27. I thought it was 37 stab wounds to the back and they found him in, in a... Uh, they found him in a shallow grave. Um, I, I, I think it was like 37, dog. And they ruled it a, they ruled it a self deletion, bro. Hell yeah. Brian Dennis, much love, brother. Keep staying true to you. Wood chipper. Wood chipper, brother. You know I love you, man. Thank you so much, bro. Um, Brock Smith, Danny Masterson got 30 years of getting it ahead. 100%, dude. Every single day of that is going to be miserable. And I don't think he's going to stay. I do not think that he's going to make it mentally through this whole trip i think that he's gonna check out i think he's gonna go to the self-checkout he's gonna self-check his ass out and i don't think uh i don't think he's gonna live i don't think he's gonna survive this dude to be 100 percent honest with you um wc tawny what's up from florida love the content man keep it coming yo what's up in florida i miss y'all i miss y'all's weather i miss it being crazy as hell you know what i'm saying it's way too sane out here what's up jacks Dumb. Yes, floor dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yo, and, and like, yo, a lot of stuff gets stupid out there, but I'll tell you right now, it's, it's, it's exciting. There's always something cracking in Florida. You know what I'm talking about. The Vile Irish, big love and respect to you. Jessica, hey, what's up, sister? Thank you so much. Big love to you. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Congrats uh, to Don Marie on your queen time, honey. Yeah, congrats to Dawn Marie. How much clean time? Since 2015. Since 2015? That's insane. Way to go. We're so proud of you. Uh, let's see here. Meg. Meg, thank you so much. Meg Spradlin. Thank you so much for the super. I really appreciate you, sister. That means a lot to me and Jax. And Zero, too. Um... Trev says Chomo sympathizers are just as bad as Chomos. 100%. 100%. People who cover up for them, people who make excuses for them. I don't care if it's your family. If you're making excuses for people who hurt kids, you are complicit. You are just as bad. The Church of Scientology is 100% complicit in Danny's crimes. Loco Siete. Did I say that right? I hope I said that right. Never thought I'd say this, but... Uh, should put some money on those BBC dudes books. <laughs> now Danny uh, needs to play that 70s porno show. Hell yeah, homeboy. 100% One... <laughs> dog. Uh, Edamame, thank you so much. 3JDPA. I like the name. I like the name. Sorry I read it like I'm completely and totally slow. <laughs> Super off topic question. But do you have, uh, but have you about anything uh, happening to the parents of Gabriel Fernandez? If you don't know, it was a horrible child abuse case 10 years ago. I just hope they get the wood chipper. I'm not familiar with the case, but I will check it out and I will see what I can find. Um, we might be able to dig up something on it. And uh, I, too, hope they get the wood chipper. And I love you, dude. Thank you so much for riding out with us tonight. Love from Eugene, Oregon. Currently in Georgia, but Eugene born and raised. What's up, Disconic? Yo, in Eugene right now. Big love and respect to you, fam. Creatively insane. Figured since you said it's too sane, I'd bring some creative insanity for Washington State. Yeah, that's what's up. Washington gets down. Trust me, Washington gets down. Night of Mischief. Everybody Google this army officer gets reprimanded for secret camera in dressing room. Lieutenant, army lieutenant Jacob um, J. Sweatland, plea agreement with prosecutors, uh, no discharge. 
No dishonorable discharge, no registry, no list. Go see the angry cop vids. Ooh, dude, I just screenshot that just so you know, homie. So I'm going to go back and check it out. Really, D, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Big love to you. You love my energy. I love yours. And I'm glad that you're a part of this community with us. Thank you so much. Uh, Colson Gregory, what's up, man? How you doing? And Soul, I feel like it's more of a cult of Scientology. It is 100% a cult. 100%. Anyone, if you go ask anybody, and there are amazing, there's an amazing community of people here on YouTube. Um, you know, shout out Aaron from growing up in Scientology. Shout out DOA. There's an amazing group of people here on YouTube who were in Scientology and they're all calling out the bullshit. They're all calling out Scientology being a cult. They're all calling out the criminal stuff that Scientology is doing. They're all calling out the abuse to members inside the Church of Scientology. So if you want to learn more about that, I really recommend a great place to start is growing up in Scientology with Aaron. Um, also, DOA is really amazing. August Underground 669. Uh, six, hey, buddy, much love from your fans here in the Great White North. Can't get enough of your content, dude. Yo, I don't have fans. I have family and friends, so welcome to the family. I love y'all, too. We all about this. You already know. Uh, Ryan Tanner, go check out uh, Bikers Against Child Abuse. Uh, not club, technically, but a nonprofit that does some really unique and good stuff with abused kids. I actually know one of the dudes... Uh, from Baca in uh, Florida, man, really good dude, and he works in recovery, um, and he also works with, uh, you know, he's uh, he's a psychologist who works with people who've been abused. That is a really, yo, they are a really good outfit. Colsey Gregory again, what's up, homie? Thank you. Erwin, have a good night, homie. Only able to hop on for a minute, but much love to you and Jax. Hope to see y'all again soon. I'm ready for Rockville. Erwin, you know we love you, little brother, man. Thank you so much. I'm hoping we get out there this year, man. They got Jelly Roll on there. They got a whole ass lineup, bro. I see a bunch of people saying, yes, they are a cult. Uh, Darian from Romania sending that love. Big love right back to you. Hell yeah. People all the way out in Romania. I'm so glad that this community is here and that we've been able to build this and that we've grown so much, man. Whether you just joined on, whether you just subbed tonight, whether you've been here for a while, whether you're one of our day ones, you guys are so important to us. And I really appreciate each and every one of you. Whether you watch the videos, you hit the like button, you comment, you show up on the lives, you just hang out silently, whatever it is that you do, you're a special part of this community and we love you. Heather Kirks, can you look into Chris Watts? I uh, hope he's receiving the wood chipper. So, Heather, the last thing that I heard about Chris Watts is he got busted because him and his celly, uh, he f they found his cellies, like, they'll, they'll mark underwear uh, if you buy underwear from uh, from the canteen. And they found underwear with his cellies, uh inmate number in his cell with some other stuff, including Vaseline. I think Chris Watts was pounding on his celly, so they separated the two of them. Or no, not his celly, his neighbor. It was his neighbor. Um, so, yeah, they they had to separate these two dudes because they was in there, and I'm pretty sure one of the other of them was getting clapped and the other one was doing the clapping. That's the last thing I heard, but I will check up. John Tyler, good evening to the Nipple King. Good evening, good sir. Soul, I feel like it's a cult of science. We already read that one, but it's worth reading twice. Scientology is a cult, folks. Scientology abuses people. Scientology leaves victims. Scientology damages communities. Megan, just got in. Quick recap on Masterson. Oh, Megan, you coming in when we got one minute left. Hold on one second. Colson Gregory, first live. Hi from California. Colson, glad to have you here. Brock Smith, South Carolina, be loving that Florida man energy. Keep up the good, awesome work, JD. Yo, I love you, Brock. Big love and respect. So, basically, I'm not going to do the full recap. Uh, I hope, uh, let's see, Megan, I hope that you've been watching before. The new news is we found out that they have put him, Danny Masterson, in a, uh, a 65 and over senior citizen elderly hospice unit. That's where he's being housed at the California men's colony, which they don't just do that. They don't just put people that are 
20, 30 years too young into a senior citizen's hospice type scenario. So like this whole thing, it just continues to reek of uh, corruption and Scientology being involved. Um, and I don't know if they're going to keep him there. I don't think that's going to be his final destination. But for right now, that's where he's at within the California men's colony. So if you weren't caught up on the other stuff, uh, I encourage you to just like maybe like once this publishes, just check out the live from the beginning. We get to it pretty quickly um, and we've done a couple different recaps. So I don't want to put everybody through a whole nother recap. But that is the news is that they put him in, in a basically a hospice. Uh, he's got a celly. His celly is uh, probably a diaper wearing dude. Uh, I can't imagine living 30 years in that type of a scenario. I wouldn't do it. I'd, I'd be gone, bro. Ryan B., have you heard anything about Jacob Sweatland? I saw something about him from Angry Cops. He put a camera in changing rooms and was let off by the military with a slap on his wrist. We've had multiple comments about this dude, so I'm going to be checking into this after I get off this live, and I'm going to do as much research as I can about this situation. I heard they didn't even give him a dishonorable discharge or probation, and that's foul. And I want to expose that, and I'd like to find out as much as I can on it. So, Ryan, thank you. you this is like the third comment on this dude tonight. Uh, you guys really lit a fire under my ass. I love y'all. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Dirty South. What's up, Big Skin from Arkansas? What's up, man? How you doing out there in Arkansas? I love me some Arkansas, bro. Went out there, had the best time. Y'all people out there really has some uh, hospitality, man. Y'all good folk out there. Paul Martinez, my attorney got my drug charges dropped from seven years ago. Uh, my charges finally got dropped. I've been sober ever since 2018. Yo, Paul, 2018, that's beautiful, brother. We're so damn proud of you, man. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad your charges got dropped, man. It's best not to have those types of things on your record, dog. Um... Rob Cotton, big love to you, JD, Jackson, Zero from the UK, big dog, always enjoy your content, uh, bless all your hearts, yo, Rob, we love you, man, appreciate you, family, glad that you're here, John Hogan, uh, yo, what's up, it's my first live from Jersey, what's up, John, man, you jumped in right at the end, we are just about to leave, but we are so glad to have you in this community, man, we love you, 100%, y'all, it's Friday night, so if you're going out there to rage, if you're just staying home, whatever you do, do it responsibly because I love you and y'all matter, man. Like, I know that I don't go out and party because I have a problem and not everybody has that same type of issue. If you're going out there to party tonight, all I ask is that you be safe. Ubers are cheap, DUIs are expensive, and they kill people. I love each and every one of you and I want to see you guys living your best lives, man. So we're not going to be doing Sunday Night Live this week because we're going to be at a concert up in Portland. But yo, I will see you on a live very very soon. Thank you, each and every one of you, for being a part of my life, my recovery, my community, and my family. One well, love, y'all. Be good or be good at it.